<clears throat> okay, so welcome back. This is where we were last time we were making this uh, Pixelcraft Space Shooter clone. So if I hit the play button, uh, my player ship already starts firing out projectiles, and I can move it around similar to how you would move a ship using a virtual joystick. So, first thing we're going to do today is we're going to add an enemy and add some enemy health to it. So what I'm going to do here is going to go into my art folder. I have a few, um, I have one enemy ship, I guess, that I had made before. So what I want to do is take this enemy ship, I'm going to set its pixels per unit to be 32. And then I'm also going to change the filter mode to be points so that I can get those nice jagged pixel edges. I'll apply this, and then I'll pull this into the scene. I must be in a weird spot here. Okay, yeah, there we go. Let's pull this over. So this particular enemy is about the same size as the ship. I'm going to uh, change the name of this first. So I'll call this um, maybe like large circular enemy. And then, okay, I'm going to add a few things to it. My first thing I'm going to add is a uh, physics 2D. A circle collider because that's what's going to fit this best and I'm not going to play with the circle collider on this like I did on the main ship I'm going to leave that pretty much to the right size. You always want to err in the player's favor. I'm going to make this a trigger uh, for something that we're going to use that for in just a moment. I'm also going to, since this is something I want to move around in the scene, I'm going to add a rigid body 2D to it. So I'm going to go to physics 2D, rigid body 2D, and inside the rigid body 2D, I'm going to set the gravity to 0. And I'm also going to set the collision detection to continuous, so that it's always detecting if it's colliding with something. And I'll also freeze the Z constraint so it doesn't look like it's rotating strangely. OK, so first thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to go into my scripts folder. Right click, I'm going to create a new C -sharp script. I'm going to call this enemy health. Uh, before I go too far, I'm going to add the enemy health script to my enemy that I just created. So I'm just going to window shade these because I don't need them right now. And pull in enemy health. And then I'm going to open up this script in Visual Studio. You can of course use Monarch Bell if there's not really a big difference between the two for what we're doing today. There is a big difference between the two but not for what we're doing. So what I'm going to do first, once this loads up, is the first thing I'm going to do is I want to know how much health the enemy has. And then I want to have a method in the enemy to decrease that health. All right. So I'm going to say public int health. So this is going to be how much health that enemy has. And then I'm going to create a new method here. Let me dig in this first. I'm going to create a new method here underneath update. This is going to be something that um, is just a void. It doesn't return a value, it just does stuff. So I'm going to call this void uh, take damage. And then in this take damage method, I'm going to say health minus equals. Uh, I'm going to say damage to take. Now it's going to turn red right now because I haven't defined that variable in here. What I want to do instead is have this be a variable that is passed into this function, meaning this function won't run unless I give it a number for how much damage for the ship to take. So in here, uh, in between these parentheses, I'm going to do int damage to take. And what that does is it creates this variable. So whenever I call this method, I have to tell it how much damage the ship needs to take. Uh, OK. So I'm going to save this script really quickly. Now I'm going to go into the laser controller. Now in the laser controller, pretty much all we're doing right now is just setting its um, direction and speed. And then we're also uh, telling it to destroy itself after a certain amount of time. We'll be implementing an object pooling system uh, later on, because otherwise we're creating and destroying a lot of different objects. And that can make. Um, 
our game runs slow even on a fast machine because the thing in Unity that creates and destroys objects is called the garbage collector. It's kind of system resource intensive, but we'll get to that. So for now, what I'm going to do is create a method that is something that Unity already has. So I'm going to call this void on trigger enter 2D. And I'm going to use a collider 2D that I'm going to call other. All right. So on trigger enter 2D is a method that Unity has built into it. And it requires you to pass in a collider for it to enter a trigger zone for. And right now I'm calling that other. I could call it enemy or Bob or Phil or whatever you want to. I just, I always call it other. Okay. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to implement something called a tag system, where we're looking for the tag of the thing that we're colliding with. So if I pop back into Unity here, I'm going to go to my large circular enemy. As soon as everything's done, there we go. I'm going to go to tags, which is right up here underneath its name in the inspector. I'm going to add a tag. So right now the tag list is empty. I'll add one for enemy. And while I'm at it, I'm going to as well add another one for projectile. So now I'll go back to my enemy here, and I will assign it to have the tag I just created. All right. So back into Visual Studio, I'm going to say if other dot tag is equal to enemy, then I'm going to do stuff. And if it's not an enemy, I won't do stuff. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to say other dot get component. And if I'm using this, I have to make sure that all of my enemies have an enemy health component attached to them. The component I'm going to get is enemy health. Uh, and then from this method, I'm going to do take damage. And it doesn't come up right away because I wasn't thinking and I forgot to make that method public in enemy health. So back over here, before this is the enemy health script. So before I do the void, I'm going to call this public void. And that way I can call it from somewhere else. So now I need to also tell it, uh, just back up here. There we go, take damage. And then the amount of damage I'm going to take, I'm just going to call it damage. Now I haven't assigned this damage variable to my projectile yet, so I'll go up here. And right underneath my speed, oh, no, it's a movement variable, so I want to keep that separate. So I'll do a new header for damage. And then I'll say public int damage. So now if I go down here, I have that take damage is exactly what it should be. So I'm going to save this. I'm going to pop back into Unity. Wait for it to compile for a second. And then on my large circular enemy, you can see that I have a place here where I can fill in its health. I'm going to say this guy has a health of three. Now if I hit play, I want to watch what happens to the health as it gets hit by Nothing's happening. Is that because they're both triggers? Let's take a look. So, ship regular fire. Yeah, so this one's a trigger. I'm going to make it not a trigger. So, I'm going to make things a little complicated later on, but I'm going to do that just so that we can have the enemies be triggers. Oh, whoa. Okay, that was weird. Oh, no, and they're still not taking out damage. Let's see what I can do to fix this. Okay, so here's what the problem was. In my ship regular fire, I never actually set the damage. So let's set the damage to be one. All right, if I go to my large circular enemy, I hit play. Uh, let's test this out and see if it works. So you can see that over here, every time it gets hit by one of the laser fires, its health is decrementing. However, there's a few problems with that. First of all, the laser keeps going, which maybe is something you want, maybe is something you don't. Uh, we can address that in a minute. Second of all, the ship's health is way below negative 50 right now. Nothing's happening. So let's make something happen. First, when the laser hits the ship, let's make it destroy itself. 
So what we're going to do is other.tag enemy. So this is the laser controller script in the on trigger enter. Um, we're going to tell the other ship to take damage equal to however much damage this has. And then what we're going to do is destroy this dot game object. And you really only have to do game object. You don't have to do this dot game object. I just like doing this because it makes it seem a little more clear if anybody else had to read the code. So now if I go into the enemy health here, what I want to do is in my update method, I want to be paying attention to what our current health is. And if our current health is less than or equal to zero, we want to destroy the ship. So I'm going to do if health is less than or equal to zero, then same thing. But I need to not have a space between those, but I'll fix that. This dot game object. All right. So less than or equal to needs to be together like that. Okay. So if I save this now, if I pop back into Unity, you should see a few different things happen as soon as it's done compiling here. All right. So if I hit play, I should be able to see the uh, health go down, and then as soon as it went down past zero, it disappeared. All right. So we can do this to a bunch of different enemies. We can have them have different health because this script is pretty modular. Anything we want to be considered an enemy, we just have to make sure that we tag it as an enemy when we put it into the scene. So before I go too much further, I'm going to go to my prefab folder, drag in large circular enemy, because uh, eventually I'm going to have something that's generating these uh, as a certain amount of time goes, so they don't have to actually lay out the levels. OK. Uh, well, thank you very much. If you have any questions or comments, please feel free to uh, add them below and like if you liked it and have a great day.